Perfect. All right. All right. So we're going to go through a bunch of information. We'll go through just like logistics and what you can expect. Um, and then we'll get into the training. Um, but yeah, so first up, this is going to be recorded. We're going to, you know, be sharing it with all four of you. And then parts, the parts that are the trainings, we're going to edit that out and put them on YouTube in case any other members also just want that uh, comms training information. Um, it, there is closed captioning available if you need it also. And uh, we're in meeting mode on Zoom. You can mute and unmute yourself. Yeah, um, there's not room any of us, so we should be good to go. All right. And yeah, same kind of community agreements as usual in PWN things. Um, we love pronouns, so try to put your uh, your pronouns in your Zoom name. Um, yeah, just be respon responsible for your impact, your words, practice language justice, uh, make space, take space. Um, I really like that one. Do y'all, are you both familiar? I see you both nodding. Okay, good. <laughs> Confidentiality. Sometimes there will be things that just need to stay between us. So, you know, discretion, uh, speak from the eye and prioritize your wellness. If you need to take a break, if you need to go get some water, if you've got something going on, just let us know. We're flexible and we just want you to be well and accommodate your needs. All right, and here we are. Alex, do you want to say hi? Hi, I know you both already. I've talked to both of you, um, but I'm Alex. I use they, them, AIA pronouns. I'm the communications assistant with PWN. Um, I've been here for about a year and a half. Surprisingly, it's been so long already. <laughs> Um, but it's very nice to meet you both. Um, yeah, Victoria, did you already? Yeah, pretty much same for me. I'm really happy that I know you both a little bit, but that I get to know you better now. Um, but yeah, my pronouns are she, they, ella. I have been comms director here at PWN for like two and a half years, I guess. That's crazy. Um, and yeah, yeah, super excited. All right, so here we go, agenda. I already talked about this a little bit, but we'll get into, you know, more intros. Um, we'll do the orientation of everything around like, you know, hours and stipend and all that good stuff. And then we'll get into the training, which is going to cover a basic, like, what even is communications, why social media is so important, and we'll talk some about digital security and just the platforms and tools that we're going to be using. Um, and this is just kind of our standard language of how we talk about what is Positive Women's Network anytime folks ask and anytime we have to write about it. Okay, so this is me too. Um, this is a general, just like, what is communications? I've had to give this little spiel to everyone at every level for, like, executive directors who have been doing this for 20 years and folks who just gotten started. It's a, it's a tricky thing, so we want to make sure we define it. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. Um, so first of all, there's a lot of, you know, just the one S is the difference between communication and communications, which we reduce to saying comms, but they're not the same thing. Communication is all of the interaction and exchange of messages and their meanings between individuals or groups. So anytime folks are communicating with each other, communications is how the messages and the stories are distributed to target groups by speech, writing, images, behavior, symbols, anything that gets your point across. 
let's go to the next one. You can put that in more concrete terms. So I'd love to hear from y'all. What do you think about when you think communications? Do you think about communications? First of all, is that something that is ever on your mind? And if so, when you hear that word, what what comes into your mind? And you can just go for it. Come off mute and go for it. I think of social media for me, you know, communications. Um, I have my following on TikTok and Facebook. And communications to me is getting out what you feel needs to be said in a way that people will um it'll catch their eye and or their ear and that's to me is what communications is absolutely thank you so much mj selena kenya what do y'all think of yes i agree with mj <laughs> i agree with mj um yes um definitely using social media as a tool um and also i, I guess doing one-on-ones if that makes sense doing one-on-ones one on talking to people out on the field um I consider that communications also and I think that's it yes I love that I love that that you are putting together organizing and communications because that's 100 percent right how about you Kenya uh, I just I think about computer technology as um a way of um communication um you are you're always um on site uh, networking when you're on uh, on a computer so I think the communications with speaking through the computer yeah yeah absolutely we hear that all the time let's go to the next one um especially like social media and technology websites that's usually what we i hear the most often uh, i also hear flyers logos like putting a logo on stuff that's comms <laughs> let's go to the next one um so here's a bunch of things that it also is it's art um this is a piece by julio salgado um homeland security which i think is hilarious but like it, it already says so much, right? It's like pro-immigrant, pro-queer. It's funny. Um, it's so much, right? All right, next one. It's action. So anything that is getting your attention that is creative or a spectacle, like theater or actions like this. This was in um, Arizona. The uh, organization Puente did this. They went up on a crane and put this huge banner up that was up for over an hour back in 2010 when like Arpaio and all of the really gross anti-immigrant um, sentiment started coming around. Yeah, that's communications. Next, it is it is branding, so it is logos. Do y'all know what logo this is? Equal. Uh-huh, what's it, what's it stand for? I don't know. <laughs> I was one person. I know one I can't think of. <laughs> MJ, you look like you've seen it before. I have seen it, and I just cannot put what it is. But I, I know once you tell me, I'm gonna know. <laughs> Lena, have you seen it before? So this is the logo of a uh, human rights campaign, HRC, and oh. this logo went huge it was everywhere stickers you would see it all over the place back in the day when we were fighting for marriage equality um that was you know and it was like this really simple just like two lines and you're already telling the world how you feel about gay marriage so amazing example there yeah oh and it's data so all of the really technical stuff when you're getting together with focus groups and trying to figure out what messages resonate better with people, um, A-B testing. So like sometimes we can do things like take part of our mailing list and send them one message. And then the other part, we would send them a slightly different message and then see which one they respond to better um, and kind of collect that data and use it to 
um, direct where we're going. Um, any kind of like analysis about what kind of messages resonate with people is all data that we want. Next, it's storytelling. So this is pictures from my Young People's Theater Indigenous Storytelling Workshop. But storytelling, y'all are familiar with. I know you have all done your own personal like storytelling, talking about it with community members, with legislators, with whoever. It's such a huge part of what we do. Um, it's what we're trying to communicate, right? And next, it's also technology. So you're absolutely right, Kenya. Um, this is an example of an app that uh, United for Respect came out for Walmart workers to organize. It had like their, um, all of their uh, employee handbook and all of these different things they could use to like connect with each other and to just like make sure that they weren't being taken advantage of as workers. Getting all of these folks to come together on this app gave a ton of um momentum to this campaign for um organizing walmart workers all right let's go to next one so yeah it's all of the tactics that we implement to communicate with stakeholders and promote our cause um sometimes we only think of um the vehicle for the message right like social media or a computer or a website but it starts much earlier. It starts when we're thinking about, you know, from your personal experience, talking to community members, deciding what the message and what the tone of that message is going to be. Those are all things we have to um, take into account. All right, next. All right. Any questions about that before we go to social media? Okay. Yeah. Perfect. I'm going to let Alex take it away for this next part. Thanks, Victoria. Rest your voice. Get a comment. <laughs> Thank you for all that you've been carrying so far. Um, so why is social media so important? Uh, you all love social media. We all love social media. It's very rare that I come across someone who doesn't use social media or at least know about it. Um, so we're going to get a little bit into that today so we live in a world that is undeniably digital and it's increasing we have new technologies coming out every every week from social media artificial intelligence digital twins all kinds of stuff is happening and it's uh growing at an exponential rate um our society is completely unrecognizable from even five years ago ten years ago not just with technology, but also with the pandemic that also changed a lot about our society and our world and the way that we interact with each other. Um, so just some little background information. In 2023, 67% of the world, the entire world, accessed the internet, which almost doubled from 10 about 10 years ago in 2014. That's a mind-blowing amount of people, that's billions of people, access the internet regularly. And so since more people are getting connected and on the internet and communicating with people, this has led to a huge increase in demand for communication tools, for resources, and also for workers who are skilled in communications, which is what we're hopefully going to help build you all up, give you those skills to make you have a better edge in everything that you do. Uh, social media, social media, and more social media. <laughs> so social media itself at a basic level is defined as any internet-based websites or applications where people can participate in conversations, you can connect, share your thoughts, and engage in social networking, but virtually instead of in person. Um, so it primarily started as a way for people to connect with friends and family. I, I know you all know Facebook and MySpace were some of the very big first social media platforms, which are primarily to stay connected with loved ones. But as time has gone on, technology has increased. And like we were talking about just a second ago, there's more demand for people to stay connected. And with that huge increase of people online, it is now becoming a place to get your news, 
to market your business or your product, to communicate with others, influence community behavior. That's a little bit of what we do when we're sharing messages and pictures and photos and connecting to people online and telling them our story, our values, and trying to influence them to join our movement. Um, and one thing that makes social media so successful is that humans are inherently attracted to patterns, stories, and faces. We all need community, we need relationships, and that makes it a really powerful tool for connection. So can you guess how many people across the world use social media? And it's probably gonna be bigger than what you think. So does anyone wanna try to guess? Billions. Billions, it's true, that's correct. Oh my God, he's so adorable. Billions, I don't know, billions or billions. Billions, Selena, do you have a guess? Uh, talk about, about, about billions, a lot of, a lot of people, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing now you know it's in you know it's mm -hmm. it's the popular thing it's 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 where it's at you yeah. know it's changing the world <laughs> it sure is victoria yeah. did you peek at the notes do you know do you want to guess I don't know and i don't remember i was like two-thirds of people is that a thing maybe no not that many half mm -hmm. <laughs> 4.9 billion people in the world. I'm pretty sure that's close to half or more than half of the people in the world. Yeah. So that is a huge amount of people. There are only like, what, a hundred, a few hundred million people in the U.S.? And out of those few hundred people of uh, people living in the U.S., over 70% of them use social media regularly. So that's way more than a majority of people in the US use social media. Um, here are some breakdowns of percentages by age group. So unsurprisingly, people age 18 to 29, about 84% of that population uses social media. And then slowly decreases um, for 81% of people 30 to 49, 72% of people 50 to 64 and then 45% of people 65 and older. Um, so yeah, that's just a lot of people. I know I've been involved in social media and I've done this uh, presentation before. It still blows my mind how many people use social media. Um, and so for 2023, here's the ranking of the most popular social media platforms. Number one is Facebook, two is Instagram. Number three, I believe is WhatsApp. And then number four is Instagram, six, TikTok, and then 14, Twitter or X, which is continuing to go down. I think between 2023 and 2024, Twitter lost about 30% of its active users. Um, with the ownership change and the name rebranding that not a lot of people are fond of, in addition to a lot of the far-right extremist rhetoric that's getting promoted and anti-trans sentiment that's being supported by the managers. It's continuing to go down, uh, but these are the main social media platforms that we, we use and we will be using. Okay, any questions about social media? Were you all surprised about how many people use social media? No. No? That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I was the I was really looking at that like 45% of people like 65 and older that's wild that's wild that's like half of the population I mean <laughs> that is crazy because you think okay young people yes everybody's on it but you know folks were retired mm -hmm. like they're out here you know posting pictures of their mm -hmm. grandbabies great grandbabies I love it. <laughs> All right, we're going to talk about digital security a little bit. Just some tips. All right. So number one, this is really important. 
as you are out in the world in these campaigns, just be careful with any of the personal details that you may encounter of people that are involved in the campaign. Volunteers, people whose doors you're knocking on or talking to on the street, whoever. Um, you might just be really harmlessly wanting to give them a shout out, but and inadvertently give away their living location, any contact information, their HIV status that they might not be open about. So we just want to generally be really careful. Um, you need consent to disclose any of that information or share photos. And you don't have to like get them to sign a contract or anything or a photo release. You can just say, hey, is it okay if we post pictures of you? Um, Verbal is totally fine. Selena, I see your hand. Uh, question. If they don't want to be on camera, can I do like an off shot? Like uh, take up, uh, they record their feet or record their hand or something or just, 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 just yeah, do an off shot. Uh, that if they're not willing to show their face. Yeah. So as long as it's okay with them, absolutely and i've done that before i've had you know folks who um you know didn't want to disclose their status but they still wanted to speak out and so like you said you know we would just shoot so you could only like hear their voice but you couldn't see their face some mm -hmm. people are okay with that some people might not even want their voice but maybe they'll give you a, a quote that you can share anonymously or something like that so i love that um that's a really great way to think about it because even if folks don't want all of their information out there, maybe not everybody's ready to be the face of the movement, but that doesn't mean that they don't have something to share and that there's not, you know, something that they can contribute. So I love that. Thank you for that question, Selena. Um, also be careful with what's in the background of your pictures. I did a really beautiful photo shoot one time inside our like a physical office of a place that I used to work and our Wi-Fi password was like written in chalk on the wall. I had to go in and digitally like erase the Wi-Fi password from every single one of those pictures because obviously I wasn't even thinking about it. So yeah, just be mindful about what's back there. Um and yeah, just revealing personal information about somebody online without their consent is called doxing. It can lead to all kinds of unintended negative consequences for the victim. There's things that you might not even think about. We've worked with folks who, you know, may not even want like a uh, a ex-partner to know where they are or what they're doing. You know, there's just all kinds of things we need to be mindful of to keep people safe. And it's a really easy way to just, you know, just ask, hey, what are you comfortable with us sharing? All right, next. Um, so yeah, any files that you get access to, whether they be, um, yeah, pictures or uh, written files or whatever else, make sure that you only share uh, directly with people who need to see it. It's on a need to know basis. Um and just try and become as familiar as you can and just check and double check the permission settings on the platforms that you'll be using. Um, that's just a really good rule of thumb. I think everybody could do that more. <laughs> I think there's a lot of things that um, are changing all the time, especially on social media platforms. The way that you share and who can see your content uh, it is, yeah, changing all the time. And also it's a risk assessment, right? Like what are, sometimes you're making a calculated risk about uh, sharing a particular piece of information, obviously not about something that, you know, relates to a person, um, but something about a campaign, like maybe we're doing a pop-up action somewhere and we want to get the word out to our community, but we don't want to get the word out to any opposition that might be out there doing a counter protest or something like that. So you have to maybe the pros of getting the information to your community outweigh the cons of, you know, having other folks find out about it who might come and cause a ruckus. 
So you're just kind of assessing that, that risk. And if you ever need any help with that, we can definitely help. And last, passwords, passwords, passwords. It is all about passwords. Um, you want to use strong ones. I love a random password generator. Uh, if you're trying to type one from memory, it's terrible because you have to sit there and look at the symbols <laughs> and, and go kind of like key by key. But that is the way to keep your stuff safe. Um, there's a really easy way to do that, though, is use the password manager. There's a bunch of free ones. You can um, add it to your browsers so that it just automatically populates on your computer all your passwords so you don't even have to remember them or remember where you put them. It'll be right there. Um, some options for this are Dashlane. Uh, we use LastPass at PWN, although that's not one of the like highest rated ones anymore. Um, but yeah, there's lots of options for that. Yeah, Bitwarden, I think I've heard a lot about it being kind of one of the best, best ones. And then finally, two-factor authentication um, is super safe. That's when you have it set to not only do you have to put in a password, but it'll also send a code to your phone or to your email. Um, that way, if somebody does get your password somehow, they still have to sidestep this whole other authentication that they won't be able to get unless they also have um, your phone. So yeah, that that's it for that. Any questions about digital security? Awesome. All right, Alex, I think it's on you next, is it? Um, uh, just a little fun story. Um, I've had this happen before where I've had a password manager and I put my randomly generated password in there and somehow or another someone got it and tried to log into my email address several times. Um, but thankfully I had my two factor authentication uh, sent up, set up. So then I always got a notification. Are you trying to log in? And I have Gmail, so it'll say, it'll give you like a location. And it was usually somewhere in Florida where I used to live. And I'd be like, no, that's not me. And then I would just deny it. So then they wouldn't actually be able to access anything. And then I'll be able to reset my password. So this is super, super important. I do it for anything like related to like financial stuff, my medical stuff, social media, obviously email, all of those good things. Um, and if you want to work on doing this for some of your stuff, let us know. Maybe in our uh, weekly mentorship meetings, we can help you go through some of this stuff. Because it can be a little confusing, but very, very helpful. So next, technology and software tools. I know this is our favorite technology. <laughs> um, but we're going to do our best to help you uh, get acclimated to it. So the first group of software that we are going to be using is Google Suite. Uh, I'm pretty sure you're all familiar with it. Google Suite is basically a group of software tools that Google, the company Google uh, supplies. So that includes Gmail, Google Drive, which is a place to style, to store all kinds of files, um, kind of like, uh, it's kind of like a virtual flash drive. So that's easier to understand. Uh, Google Docs, which is another one that we're going to be using, which is like Microsoft Word. If you're more familiar with that, it's just a place where you can write content more for like written text. Uh, the next big software platform that we're going to be using is Canva. It's a very user-friendly graphic design platform that we use to create a variety of visual content. So we will mainly be using this to create graphics and flyers for our social media content. Um, but it does have video editing also, which has been really good and pretty easy for me. Um, have has anyone used Canva before? No. So Do you need us to download it? I can download it on my tablet when I'm done. Um, when I get off the phone, um, and and when we just and we'll have access to it. Like, is it a code or something we put in for it? Yeah, it's an application, so you can download it on any mobile device. I have it on my phone. 
Um, it's also a website, so you can type in canva.com and then you can access it through the web also. Uh, C. Braille said yes. What about you, MJ? Have you used Canva before? Yes. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Braille uses it all the time. Real, you might just have to be our trainer. You might have to. No, that's that's <laughs> all of you. Most of you have used it. Um, but if not, yeah, that's for me. we will work with you. We will help you get added. Um, so yes, except for me. <laughs> we'll work with you, Selena. I'll, I'll teach you everything I know. <laughs> Thank you. You know, one quick thing about Canva. I love Canva. It's a great equalizer because you used to be able to, like, you had to basically have a degree in graphic design and take a class on Photoshop to be able to make a graphic. And now anybody can do it. My daughter is in fifth grade and they are learning to use Canva now. And that blew my mind. And she's making all kinds of cute stuff in there. Um, like she'll see me working on stuff and she'll come in and be like, oh yeah, Canva. <laughs> I love it. How how do y'all get your background? Like how um Selena and and you, how do y'all get your background? How do you get that? Can I get one of those? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so on Zoom, there's a little up arrow next to the video icon on the bottom left hand of the screen if you click on that and pick um choose virtual background yes you click on that and it'll give you all kinds of you can choose to um blur your background if you just you know didn't do your laundry and have piles of it everywhere like is the case at my house or <laughs> you if you have a particular you know image that you want to show um like I can change it to our CHBW background um yeah all that good stuff but we can definitely um we've got like some tutorials on that too Kenya if you want and eventually you'll be able to even make them yourself on canva okay yes canva is amazing it's also they have a free version which it has some limited like options in terms of like little uh like clip art graphics elements but you can do it for free so it's truly a blessing I don't know what I was doing before I found Canva. And then once you get the basic feeling for the software and all the options and stuff, you can just, on your own time, if you want to create like a free account, you can just go in there and make all kinds of stuff. Like I make birthday cards, do social media stuff. This presentation that we're doing, these slides are in Canva. Uh, documents to be printed out, business cards, videos. You can do anything, anything visual you can create it in Canva. Victoria, you want to take it away for their become practice? Yes. So we're giving you a teeny tiny piece of little homework, but we're not going to call it homework because nobody likes homework. This is just practice. And we're very aware that we've taken up a lot of time with trainings and all kinds of stuff um, for your first week. So we're keeping it really, really short. Um, let's go to the next slide. So we're going to practice voices. And your voice is the kind of the tone and the personality that you're writing in. Um, so as campaign uh, comms consultant, you'll be creating content on behalf of PWN. So take a minute and think about how is that different from the content that you create for your own personal page? Um, I can tell you one difference right now on my personal page, I can talk about, you know, I, I can say I am just as a, as a person, not as a worker of PWN, but as a person who is going to go out and vote, I can tell you who I can and who I won't be voting for. Um, but if I'm writing on behalf of PWN, we're a 501c3 organization, so we don't talk about candidates, but I can still say, hmm, 
have y'all read Project 2025? Think about that when you go to the polls, <laughs> right? Exactly. Curse words. That's another thing. Maybe you'll use uh, curse words on your personal page and you wouldn't use it professionally. You know, Peter, we take a, we take a few little risks. We'll put we love talking about how our members are badasses. So we'll go there. But <laughs> we also want to, you know, make sure that we don't offend anybody with our language. So, you know, there's all sorts of little things like that. Even there are organizations that don't use emojis. We love emojis over here at PWN. Um, so this is just going to be a little bit of practice. We're going to ask you to write two posts um, announcing the launch of your PWN's chapter voter engagement campaign. It can be super, super short, just a sentence or two. Um, or you can do as much as you want with it. If you want to make a video, whatever you want to do. Um, but it can be very, um, very short. We just want you to practice doing one in your personal voice and one in, P in PWN's voice. Or what you think uh, would be PWN's voice. And think about how those would be different. 